Religious indifferentism is a pernicious error, damning souls. The consequent freedom of conscience is the ruination of church and state. To allow people to tell people that they are free to take what religion they like is the ruination of church and state. That's not Catholicism. He allows these false religions to exist, but he doesn't say that we've got the right to follow the false religions. He that believes and is baptized will be saved. He that refuses to believe will be condemned. You, you and I have got to be Catholics if we want to save our souls. Period. You're only going to get people living happily and quietly together, really, when they're all Catholic. Then you will have peace. There have been no major wars in South America for 500 years. Why? Because they're all Catholics. A war is a game back in the Middle Ages compared with what it is in modern times. You look at the battlefields of World War I and World War II. World War I, 14 million people killed. World War II, 66 million people killed. It took George Washington to attack across the Delaware on Christmas Day, right? And he counted it a great blow when he attacked. He, it was a smart thing to do to attack on Christmas Day because he won. It was efficient. But was it such a smart thing to do? As a trade-off, you say. If you're proud of shooting the English soldiers from behind trees, it's simply a matter of time before all the Vietnamese shoot you behind trees. Chickens come home to roost. Freedom of the press is swamping the world in a deluge of error. Look around you today. Look at these vile media that we've got today. Do you think there's freedom of the press today? There's a strict censorship. There's a strict liberal censorship against any real truth or capital thinking in today's media. They're being led to the slaughter by the criminal liberals, which is far worse than anything that the church ever imposed upon them by way of censorship. Seditious revolutionaries, dethroning princes are damnable. Ooh. Ooh. In everything that's not contrary to religion, Christians have always obeyed. They've always been ready to obey their prince. St. Morris, who was the Roman officer in charge of a whole legion of officers, who could easily have stood up and said, Hey, look, you guys, if you want to execute us or make us worship false gods, we're going to turn around. We've got 6,000 soldiers. We're going to fight. The legion was decimated. The authorities said, you obey, and they said, no, we can't obey because it's against God. Well, in that case, we're going to take every tenth soldier, that's what decimating means. So they took every tenth soldier and killed them. And now you're going to obey, no, we're not going to obey. So they took the second out of every tenth soldiers and killed them. They killed the lot, including St. Morris and the officers. The lot! They would rather be killed than they did not fight. They did not stand up and resist. And they didn't even fire off a lawsuit at the Roman Emperor. That was not the thinking of Christians. Read about St. Morris. What made this man tick? He must have been off his head. The crusty old bachelor says, no, the saint was in his right mind. Dear bishops, fight the good fight and let reason defer to faith. Let faith guide men's minds. Dear princes, if you want to defend your kingdoms, defend the faith. Protect the church and then the church will handsomely help to protect you because the church will tell the people to obey their princes the church will tell you that you've got to stay married until the day you die you must not fool around with a lot of mistresses well the princes don't like hearing that they may or may not heed but the church will tell the princes to obey and that's why the people will trust the church you will have harmony and order if everybody listens to the church you will have harmony and order